our praise. So we bless you today and we thank you. And we declare your glory in this place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All over the room, put your hands together. Give him a good praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You ready for the word? Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. So our YouTube and Facebook audience, we thank you for your viewership and we bless you. Welcome to Dove Christian Center. Or just we're just known as Dove Church now. We, we thank God for you. We pray constantly for you. Subscribe and tell others that we're here. Let them know that there is a good word spoken from the corner of a military and Horatio in Detroit, Michigan. There's a good word coming to you. A blessed word, a transformative word, and we thank God for it. And as usual, get your Bibles or wherever you're Bible is at on your phone or your pad, whatever device it's on. And repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, as we gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Father, we pray that the word of our mouth and the meditation of our heart would be acceptable in thy sight. Holy Spirit, we bless you and thank you and give you glory and give you honor that you will take us into the places that we need to be in. Help us to speak forth the mind of God in this time. And we thank you that we believe we receive it when we pray. Amen. Amen. Today, we continue in the Holy Spirit series, and we're just kind of touching the surface of the Holy Spirit. It is a great subject, it is a great discussion, it is an ongoing discussion, it is a never-ending discussion. And so we continue. And today's uh, uh, installation of the Holy Spirit series is the Holy Spirit and satisfaction. The Holy Spirit and satisfaction. The indwelling Holy Spirit is a source of full and everlasting satisfaction and life. When you have the Holy Spirit, you look to be satisfied. This is a great statement. We have the tendency to think deficit more than fulfillment. Fulfillment is what God promises. And to, to show you something as it relates to fulfillment, I want to give you a beginning scripture, something you can hold on to. And it says in Proverbs 13 and 12, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but desire fulfilled is a tree of life. You're going to have to find the scriptures today. Proverbs 13 and 12. And I'll read it again. 
Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But desire fulfilled is a tree of life. If you are hopeless, your heart's sick. But desire fulfilled or satisfied is a tree of life. Come on. Isn't that a good word? Write this down. Fulfillment equals satisfaction. Fulfillment equals satisfaction. Let's quickly look into scripture. A scripture that speaks about fulfillment and satisfaction. It's from St. John the fourth chapter, and then I'll give you the verses that we're going to center in, but let me open up with this. It is the story of the woman of Samaria that Jesus met at a well in that city. In this story, Jesus is dealing with the woman's thirst, a thirst she didn't know she had. This woman comes to the well at an odd hour, noon. The normal time other women came to draw water was in the early morning. This woman had a questionable lifestyle and was probably trying to avoid ridicule and being shamed. So, so she decided to come at noon when no one else was there, she thought. But it was that time that Jesus decided to go to the well. And isn't it wonderful that he always meets us at an inopportune time? He shows up at the time where we're not expecting anybody to show up to deal with us like nobody else would have dealt with us. It was a Holy Spirit intersection. It was destiny. It was life-changing. And all of us need a life-changing intersection with Jesus. Over and over and over again. Because it satisfies. In John 4, 10 through 12. Verses 10 through 12. Here is the reading. Where Jesus interests the woman in living water. Got her interested in living water. Jesus answered and said to her. If you knew the gift of God, who it is who says to you, give me drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. This woman said to him, because she was only dealing in the natural, she said to him this next statement, Sir, you have nothing to draw with. See, if people only deal in the natural, they're only looking for natural stuff to get natural water. And then she said, as if he didn't know, the well is deep. So what water are you talking about? And then she said, where then do you get this water or that living water from? And then, and then, then she got spiritual. She got deep. Are you greater than our father Jacob? In other words... What you have is better than the, the well that our father Jacob dug. She still didn't understand. Who gave us the well and drank. And on top of that, he drank from the well himself. Him and his sons and even his, 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 his cattle. His livestock. Everybody drank from this well. And you're telling me you got water different from the water in that well that my forefather Jacob dug. And on top of that, you don't even have anything to get the water out with. Have you ever had a conversation with somebody and they totally missed it? 
And the longer you explain, the worse it got. And you finally gave up because you said, they don't understand. And like Chris just said, never mind. Never mind. But Jesus pursued because he was after something greater about this woman. To give her hope. To give her a drink of something that would satisfy her better than anything she'd ever had. Jesus pursues. When Jesus said, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink. He said, if you, if you even knew who you were talking to. And sometimes we don't even know who we're talking to. We're so busy talking back. We don't even know who we're talking to. Jesus drew the woman into conversation, making her curious about several things. He made her curious about things of God. How? Here's a statement. If you knew the gift of God. He made her curious about who Jesus is, who it is who says to you, give me drink. He made her curious about what he would give her. He would, he would have given you living water. So she had three curiosity peaks at the same time. There is a principle connected with the words, if you knew, you would have asked him. If you knew more, you would pray more. How I many of you know, if, if you knew something was on the way, you'd get in front of it and pray better. There is another principle at work. Jesus often speaks to us as if we were more spiritual than we are. Or more understanding than we actually are. He does this on purpose. Then he says he would have given you living water. In ancient time they called spring water living water because it always bubbled up. So when spring water bubbled up, they said, that's living water. So any water, they went best, and it was troubled. They said, that's not calm water. You can't drink from that. Wow, wow, wow. But in, in a well situation, or in, 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 a, in a good situation of water, the water is always moving and bubbling and changing and operating and, and, and you see it gurgling and moving past rocks. It's living. So Jesus used that mind picture, that picture, mental picture, to say that the water that I'm going to give you is alive. It's living. It's moving. It's never ending. Because he meant the spiritual water that quenches spiritual thirst and gives life. Not just life today, but everlasting life. When you get saved, you jumped into a river that is going to land you into eternity. Living water. No earthly spring of satisfaction ever fully satisfied. We might drink of the fountain of wealth, but it does not satisfy for long. We will thirst again. We might drink of the fountain of fame, but it does not satisfy for long. You will thirst again. We might drink of the fountain of worldly pleasure, of human science, of philosophy, of governmental power, of earthly learning. We might drink of the fountain of human love. Yeah, love. But none will satisfy for long. You will thirst again. In 1965, the rock group The Rolling Stones had a number one hit single. And the song said, I can't get no satisfaction. And then some of the other lyrics of that song says, I can't get no satisfaction. Repeat, I can't get no satisfaction. Because I try and I try 
and I try, and then it doubles back and say, even after all that trying, I can't get no satisfaction. The world can't satisfy. And we will trade all for the world, but we won't trade all for Jesus, the one who can satisfy. So you're singing the song as your world testimony. I can't get no satisfaction. And you don't. Because you keep trying. That's why the refrain has to come in. I can't get no satisfaction. I tried and I tried. I can't get none. Because it's not to be found in the world. Then our scripture says that the woman said you have nothing to draw with. Going into town, the disciples probably took the leather pouch that Jesus could, would, would need to draw water from, but he didn't need it. He didn't even ask, where's my pouch? See, when you're a believer, you come equip, equipped so if something gets moved, you're still able to function. God, God, you still can draw out. My God. Then, in John 4, 13 through 15. Jesus describes the effects of living water. Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him. Everybody say in him. A fountain, everybody say a fountain. a fountain, of water springing up into everlasting life. My God, my God. This woman said to him, sir, see she, 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 the light bulb came on. Give me this water that I, that I may not thirst, nor come here to, to draw again. She went spiritual, then she came back to earth again. See, sometimes we can want what Jesus has, but we want it only to be self-serving. How do I know it's self-serving? She said, so I won't have to come back to this well to draw again. Why didn't she not want to come back to the well? Because she didn't want to have to come back to the place of her shame. She didn't want to have to come back to the place of her judgment. She didn't want to have to come to the place where she was, she was talked about. She didn't want to have to come back to the place and might be, 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 be detected. She wanted to get the water, but she didn't want to come to draw the water. Oh, God, oh, God. Just let me continue to be the way I am and get everything I need in the place where I am, where I am wrong at, and, and, and I'll be all right. But tell me where I can get this water so I won't have to walk here every day. Whoa. Whoa. Jesus used thirst. As a picture of the spiritual need and longing that everyone has. Whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him, he said, will never thirst. Jesus made an amazing offer. What did he offer her? To this woman and to anyone who would drink. Was something to give lasting satisfaction. The key is to drink of the water that Jesus is willing to give so you won't thirst. It is common to try and satisfy our God-created inner thirst through many things. As though anything except the water that Jesus gives. People are thirsty, they want it, they long, they search, they reach, but only what Jesus gives satisfies the deepest level of man's soul and spirit. Only Jesus can satisfy the thirst and longing inside of you. Woo. Drinking and thirst are common pictures of God's supply and man's spiritual need. 
Drinking is an action. But an action of receiving. Like faith, it is doing something, but it is not a merit-earning uh, 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 task in itself. You have to drink to life. What does a thirsty man do to get rid of his thirst? He drinks. Perhaps there is no better representation of faith in all the world and in all the world of God than that. To drink is to receive, to take in. The refreshing swallow, and that is all. A man may be unwashed, but if he drinks, he's satisfied. He may be guilty, if he drinks, he's all right. He may be filthy, he may be derelict, but if he drinks, he'll live. How many of you know I'm right about that? How many know that God found you? In whatever situation you were in. But when you decided to accept him and drink. He's satisfied. Someone might object and say this. There's always the obstinate one. Or here's the flip side of the argument. I drink of what Jesus offered and I feel thirsty and empty again. What's the answer? Drink again. It isn't a one-time sip of Jesus that satisfies forever. That's why somebody can join church today and slide back into the world tomorrow because they thought one little dab will do you. Or one Sunday a month will do you. Or one service a month will do you. It's a drink when you're thirsty all day, every day, 24-7. Yeah. How many of you have got woke, wake, awakened at night and, and all you wanted to do was get something to drink? I do it all the time. I get up in the middle of the night, stumbling around in the dark, hoping my toe won't make me give a testimony that I shouldn't give. Because I've stumbled on something and I find my way to the refrigerator just to grab a, 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 a bottle of my favorite water, which is Fiji, and I just glug, glug, glug down. And, and I don't drink the whole thing. And then I go right back upstairs and I'm satisfied. But in the morning, I kind of do the same old thing because one little sip won't do you. It's the same with Jesus. Oh, taste and see. That the Lord is good. How many of you know you need him all day, every day? And, 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 and we were in intercessory prayer, and I got charged up. I got a new, a new thirst quencher through praise. And, and then the, the, the worship team came up, and I got another charge, so I drank again. And then I prayed and I got charged up again. And then they sung that song and I, and, and, and I just didn't have time to dance a little bit because I sure wanted to. Got charged up again. I'm charged up now, believe it or not. Because this water brings life. This word brings life. You can't talk about it without getting satisfied. You can't minister on it and not feel anything. I know the musicians love what they do because I watch them. Because there's feeling in their face. They translate to the keys or to the, to the strings or to the skins on the drum. Now they're sitting down. I don't see that same look. But I know it's there. Satisfied. Jesus said, But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing into everlasting life. The, the effects of this water does much more than simply satisfy. The thirst of the one who drinks it also creates something good. Something life-giving. 
It becomes a fountain of war. What Jesus has ignited inside of you through the Holy Spirit is a, is a never-ending fountain. That's something good. My God. Every time you turn it on, the water flows. How do I know that? John 7, 37 through 39. And Jesus tells us this. He was at the temple. And the great big washing vats that they had. He looked at the picture of them with those giant washing vats. Some of them were taller than me. And the best way for them to empty of them. And, and they would take it and roll it to the end of the the main flat platform. And the steps were below the platform. And they would take the vat and lean it over. And the water will come rushing out. And when Jesus saw that, that picture, he, he cried out saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said. Out of his belly is what the King James says. Looking at the belly of those vats, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water flowing out. Flowing out, just like that water was flowing down. He said, Lord, there it is in demonstration. Out of their bellies shall flow. The fountain that's ignited by the Holy Spirit. Out of them is going to flow an everlasting fountain. Every time you need, the fountain comes on. Every time you need the Lord, the fountain comes. So, so it comes on at the, out, at the oddest times. It, it comes out in times when you should be grieving, but you're rejoicing. When you should be sad, the fountain is flowing, you get glad. By God. The Holy Spirit fulfills. And forever satisfies the one who receives him. In other words, this spring will not stop. This satisfaction will not stop. It will be there when you need it. It is our well of satisfaction and joy within us. Matters little what the world may dish out to us. And the world is dishing out some heavy duty stuff these days. Our source is on the inside. By way of the Holy Spirit. From Jesus Christ. Know this. This fountain is always gushing and bubbling and moving. It's living water. Isaiah 61 and 3 gives us the result of this spring of satisfying water. It says. It, consult, it comes to console those who mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they may be called trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. That he may be. Glorify. Then swinging back in. That was Isaiah 61 and 3. If you were trying to write. John 4 and 14 says. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him. Will never thirst. He satisfies. He satisfies. Having the Holy Spirit. Brings satisfaction and cancels thirst. He satisfies. He satisfies. Blessing to you today. If you heard this message today, there is a great opportunity available to you to turn on the fountain of living water. To be satisfied forever throughout eternity and it's through being filled with the Holy Spirit but first before then 
accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior. And I'd like to extend to you this wonderful opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life. Make him Lord of your life. The King of Kings and Lord of Lords to God's glory. If you have not submitted your life to the Lord, you can repeat after me and make this confession. Let's begin. Father, in Jesus' name, I repent of my sin and I give you my life. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and be my Savior. Today, Jesus, I believe in a miracle. I believe that one day you died on a cross and three days later you were raised from the dead to the glory of God. And on that confession, I am saved. In Jesus' name. Well, if you prayed that prayer, welcome to the body of Christ. What do you need to do next? You need to find a good church to get into, a good ministry to connect to, even virtually. Ours is a good one. Write us. Let us know you made this confession. Send us a message by way of Facebook or YouTube. Say, Pastor, I prayed that prayer. Pastor, I pray the prayer of restoration. Remember, God is married to the backslider. And you can always come home. You can always satisfy your thirst. You can always drink again. It's an everlasting stream. It's living water. And wherever this water goes, it brings life. Brings joy. Brings peace. Brings fulfillment. Yes satisfaction receive it today thank you for tuning in blessings to you praise the Lord again to all of our listeners we thank God for you we encourage your financial support of this ministry. Dove Church is good ground. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website at Dove Church slash giving, which takes you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.